Adam was the first one to establish the to have established the foundations of the house. And he made tawaf around it. The house remained established in that vicinity until Allah sent the flood. Then it overtook and washed through the house. So then Allah sent Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam and they rebuilt the residual. Close quote. As just a very quick point I want to mention before moving on. There is a difference of opinion among the ulama, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this before. Uh, there is a difference of opinion among the ulama whether the flood was global or local. This is one of the points that the ulama who believe in a global flood point to, is the fact that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the waters washing up and washing through the Kaaba. How could that have happened if the flood was only local? Obviously it had to be global. The jamhur of ulama state that it is a global flood. The vast majority of ulama hold that it's a global flood, like uh, Imam al Jawzi, Ibn Atiyah, Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, Al Hussein al Baghawi, uh, Ibn Kathir, Taqiyuddin ibn Taymiyyah, and many more. You will not often find people who, in, who endorse a local flood position. Most times you will meet people who endorse a global flood posi position simply because. The global flood position is the vast majority. But you will every now and then meet some people who endorse a local flood position. And they have their proofs, they have their evidences, they have their reasonings. And uh, I did a lecture about 90 minutes on, on this reason. And they have about 30 evidences on both sides of the fence. So it is the person's choice. If someone wants to, they can go and listen to the lecture on the flood the, the flood of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Because... It will answer most of those questions that surround it. Imam Ibn Jawzi rahimahullah, he continues on by saying, quote, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh said, when Allah ordered Ibrahim with the building of the house, he built it up one hand span, and he didn't know how else he should continue. So Allah sent over him the form of a cloud. And in that cloud was a head that was speaking to him. And he said, Ibrahim, work according to what I tell you and stay in my shade. And then the head lifted. And he used to build every day. And he would work under this noble cloud of tranquility building on top of the foundations. Once he had completed that work, he said to his son Ismail, bring me some stones so I can put them here. And he did. Then he asked Ismail, bring me one final stone. I need to go in here. And so Ismail alayhi salam went looking for a stone. And at that moment the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came with the black stone. And he placed it inside. When Ismail alayhi salam returned, he said, where did you get this stone? And he said, there came with this stone one who did not need my help or your help for its building. Ibn Abbas and Sa'id ibn Musayyib and Abu Aliya both say, they, when it mentions them raising the foundations, it mentions that they, what that means is they were 
re-raising the original foundations and clearing them off and rebuilding the Kaaba. In the beginning, the Prophet Ibrahim السلام, did not know where to build, so Allah sent a wind. And the wind blew around the Kaaba, wiping it off, showing the first foundations which had been built before the flood. So the exalted one then said, Lord, when they both said, Our Lord, make us both Muslims upright for your sake. As Zujad says, says, Muslim in the context of the language means one who submits to the command of Allah and obeys that command. Manasik or Mansik are times and places of worship. And every worshiper has a place and time of worship. This is why sacrifices that are offered to Allah are called nasika. The one who is sincere in his worship of Allah and is a worshiper is called a nasik. This one is offering himself for Allah and Allah alone. When they both said, and show us our manasik, our places of slaughter, this meant show us all of the way in which hajj is to be done. Close quote. So this is just giving you some background into how the Kaaba that we know of came to us. That original foundation stone that was then rebuilt, cleaned off and rebuilt. Because in the time of the Prophet Nuh, alayhi salam, and it's an important point, it's mentioned in the Jami' al-Bayan. <coughs> It's mentioned in the Jami al Bayan of Imam Abu Jafar Muhammad ibn Jarir al Tabari rahimullah that <clears throat> between Adam and Nuh was 1,000 years and everyone was upon one sharia until idolatry came. This is part of Ibn Abbas's commentary on Surah Nuh, the 71st Surah. So after idolatry came, it spread globally. And so the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he cleans off those foundation slabs or those foundation stones and re-erects the Kaaba upon those. So when we're talking about a Muslim, furthermore, when we're talking about a Muslim and Istislam, because Islam is coming from the root Istislam. And Muslim is the one who is Mustaslim, which means the one who submits to the order of Allah and is obedient to him. So, it's not coming from the root, Salima, as is sometimes said that yes, it's coming from the root, which means peace. No, Qatada is from the second age. Ibn Abbas says the same thing. The root of the word Islam is istislam, which means to surrender, which means to submit. It means to lay down arms. At the end of a war, someone has surrendered and laid down arms. The Muslim has laid down his arms. He's not trying to fight Allah anymore. He can't win. So he's laid down the arms and he's submitted. That is the root of it. Inshallah, we will break here for Allah al-Maghrib, inshallah.
and resume shortly. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Imam ibn Jawzi rahimahullah, he says, further quote, Qatada ibn Da'ima, he said, Allah showed both Ibrahim and Ismail alayhim as the places of Hajj, meaning the place at Arafat, the Tawaf al Ifada, the Rami, the Tawaf and the Sa'i. Abu Majlis said, when Ibrahim finished his work on the ancient house, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and taught him the tawaf around the house. Then he brought him to the First Jamra at Aqaba and a shaitan came to him and the angel Jibreel alayhi salam took seven stones and he gave them to Ibrahim and he said to him alayhi salam throw the stones and say Allahu Akbar and they both threw the stones and said Allahu Akbar with each throwing until shaitan went. Then he brought him to the middle jamra. And shaitan came again. And the angel Jibreel alayhi salam did just as he'd done before. And gave the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam seven stones as done before. And said to him the same instructions to throw and say Allahu Akbar. And they both did so until shaitan went. Then he took him to the furthest jamra. And they did the same thing with shaitan coming. Both of them throwing the stones alayhim as salam with Ibrahim having taken the seven and saying Allahu Akbar at each throwing. Then when he went to Mina, Ibrahim alayhi salam was brought with the angel Jibreel alayhi salam who said to him, it is here that the people will shave their heads. Then after that, Jumu'ah, after that the gathering was brought and they went to Arafah. And the angel Jibreel alayhi salam said to him, it is here that the people shall gather at Arafah. And so, from this day forward it shall be called Arafah. Close quote. Now, I want you to Remember the symbolism of this. It's 2000 BC. The angel Jibreel alayhi salam is showing the prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam all of the rites of Hajj and what's going to happen in the future. This is prophetic. You may have seen how you arrive on Hajj before the Hajj season begins and you're driven on a bus around through and shown, this is the same thing the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam got. Only he was walking. He was being shown a full tour of the Hajj because the Valley of Suwa is empty, isn't it? Arafah is empty, isn't it? Mina is empty. The Masjid al-Haram is empty. The Tawaf places around the Kaaba, they're empty. There's no green light to tell you where it's to begin. It's empty, just like when you arrive with the exception of Masjid al-Haram. So he was being shown future events that are to occur and told what actions are to be done and these actions were then handed down 
through history over those 4,000 years.